The money's important, but it's the gift of our time is equally important to really helping lift our communities. Hello and welcome to Drive, the show where we join in conversations with Chuck about what moves us forward. And today we're talking about giving back to the community. Chuck, I know this one's dear to your heart. Hey, Alan, this is uh, very dear, near and dear to my heart. Well, thanks for joining us on this beautiful day. We're it back is, outside. It is a beautiful day. And uh, I know that giving is important. Why is it most important to you? Well, we, our members live in these communities. Our employees live in these communities. We're serving 300,000 members, most of whom live in the central North Carolina area. Healthy communities benefit members, employees, and so forth. And we're, you know, we're fortunate to be a prosperous company. There are people in our communities and communities and neighborhoods that aren't so prosperous. And so I believe every business has some responsibility to help make communities better. I've heard you say that there's a difference between a responsibility right. to give back, but that's not an obligation. Right. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we, we're a regulated institution. When the regulator says, thou shalt go do this, that's an obligation. It's not a choice. A responsibility is a moral thing. And I believe every business, every company, we're earning off the community. We have a responsibility to support that community. So I imagine Coastal's approached by many different organizations. And, I, and I've noticed that you, you don't give to environmental things. You don't right. give necessarily to animal causes. Why is that? Uh, we're in the financial business. That's where our skill sets are. That's where our intellectual property is. And so we've made the choice, how do we best use not only our money, but the other things we're good at to have an impact in the community. So for us, we're a big mortgage lender. Affordable housing is one of the areas we're investing in and, and we're in the middle of a uh, significant affordable housing development. Financial literacy. You know, we don't teach kids how to manage money and manage credit when they're coming through the school system. And then um, food insecurity is the fourth one or the third one. Uh, so we support a number of organizations in the community that are working on uh, helping families and individuals who uh, don't have a steady supply of good food. Here we are in Habitat Humanities, most recent right. build out here in Durham, North Carolina. Right. How do you support Habitat? We've got, we've had a long history with Habitat. Uh, going back decades, both here in Durham County, Orange County, Wake County. Again, it's connected to our residential mortgage business, but it's also based on a belief that the primary way people and families develop wealth is through home ownership. And so part of our goal is to help more people develop wealth and live in great neighborhoods through home ownership. And so it's really twofold. We periodically will fund the cost of building a home. Uh, the coolest thing we did was with Habitat Wake a few years ago, when we did a partnership with them where we financed uh, about 60 homes. We financed the mortgages at 2% at a time when the market for mortgages were just maybe three, three and a half percent. Everybody benefited. And, and the cool part is we were able to leverage maybe 50 or $100,000 a year to $6 million of homes being built that may not have otherwise been built. Chuck, I want to remind you of a moment. Oh my gosh. What memory does that bring up? Wow. This was one of the first houses that we financed uh, or we provided the funding for uh, after I got to go. So this is, uh, this is the Kaleji family. We helped them construct the home. 
We worked with them as it was being built, and uh, they became great friends of ours. And they used to come to the branch at our headquarters uh, sometime before the holidays and would sing Christmas carols in the lobby of our headquarters. And so it was a great family, and it's such a special relationship that got established. But they were able to establish home ownership and the wealth that comes with it. It was pretty, pretty powerful. Chuck, when you donate to an organization, how does Coastal measure the success of the organization? Well, we're, we're trying to help improve the lives of people. So it boils down to how many people benefited. So I take food insecurity, how many meals got delivered to folks who are dealing with food insecurity. In the case of affordable housing, it's how many homes got built and how many families and people were able to uh, get the benefit of home ownership through the purchase of an affordable home. So Chuck, I know that Coastal has been very involved with United Way. How does that fit your priorities? So their interests are very similar to ours, but much broader. And so we're not always the most knowledgeable about where's the need. We want to provide help for the need. And I think we provided $100,000 for their uh, pandemic fund. They're best positioned to know where to put that money to work. And so we've had this incredible partnership with United Way uh, for many, many years. And uh, it allows us to really leverage their expertise. Something different that you did this past year was you invested in this TV show, Opportunity Knocks by PBS. Yeah. How did that fit into the plan? Yeah, the sad part in our country today, we do not teach middle school, high school students how to manage money, how to manage credit. And as a result, a lot of young adults go into adulthood not knowing you know, how to manage money. And so we're doing a lot of work in that space, have for a long time. We were very involved in getting the General Assembly in North Carolina to pass legislation that now requires a financial education course as part of the high school curriculum. So that's one of them. We were approached about being part of a PBS series that aligns families with a credit union to help solve some financial need they have. It could be home ownership, it could be saving for retirement. And we thought it was a way really to collaborate nationally with other credit unions. But in really showcasing how credit unions are able to work with families and individuals to help them solve big financial needs. So education seems to be a significant way that you're attacking this problem. Yep. If you could click your heels together and have one big change, what would it be? We have eight cooperative principles. One of those eight principles is member education. And in our case, it's teaching them about finance and managing personal finance and so forth. I think the biggest thing is we've got to make it important and make it a requirement as our children are being educated. Uh, in many cases, parents weren't taught how to manage money, they're not good at it. Well, their kids are gonna develop the same habits if we're not able to ensure they're educated as they're going through schooling. So we've talked about where you donate and you invest financially. We've talked about education. The flip side of all this is also just volunteerism at oh my Coastal. Gosh. How have you inspired that? So we give every employee uh, a day off with pay during the year to volunteer. Uh, however they want to. It can be church, it can be a school, it can be a habitat build, it can be, it doesn't matter. We don't, uh, we don't decide, but we pay them for a day to do that. Our employees, just in what they report, will provide over seven, 8,000 hours of volunteer work in the community this year. And we know that many of our employees are doing that every week, every month, much, on a much regular basis. And so the money's important, but it's the, 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 the gift of our time 
is equally important to really helping lift, lift our communities. And quite frankly, it's the most rewarding part. I can write a check to Habitat and know it's going to get a house bid, built to work. Actually working on the house, meeting the family that's going to live in it, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty special. What are some of the things the employees at Coastal have been volunteering for? Oh my gosh, uh, food banks. We, uh, cool story, this is Coastal's 55th anniversary. We brought in an organization uh, uh, on the day of our 55th anniversary, uh, back in August. They brought in the raw materials for food packs. Our employees packed 55,000 meal packs in about five hours from day. I mean, there were four assembly lines beat anything I'd ever seen. And it's an extension of, you know, what we're trying to do to help communities. Unlike a large banking institution that can write off these donations right. and these investments in the community, uh, Coastal doesn't get that write off. No, no, we don't. So it, it, there, there's no financial motivation for us to donate to various uh, organizations. How do you justify to members investing this much money in philanthropy? We're investing in their communities. We're investing alongside them. If we can improve life and communities for everyone, our members benefit, we benefit, we get new members, uh, and it sustains itself. Everybody wants a good, healthy, safe community where everyone is prosperous. And so the more we can do to help uh, bring that about, everybody benefits. I've never had one member say one thing negative about the work we're doing, and it's very visible. I mean, we cover it in our communications with members, so they obviously support what we're doing. Do you have opportunities where members can partner with Coastal and in investing in the community? You know, we, uh, we've had a foundation Coastal Credit Union Foundation for a number of years, but it's a donor advised fund under the Carolinas Credit Union Foundation, a collaborative effort. We're in the process of launching our own 501c3 foundation and Coastal is generously funding today a million dollars a year into that foundation. And so as we bring that to life next year, we are looking at ways to connect members. Maybe they help, help direct where the money goes. Maybe they want to participate in the volunteer efforts. And so I think that's going to give us a platform to connect to the interest of members and, and their more local communities where they live. I'm going to ask you a personal question. As CEO, and you look back over your season of leadership at Coastal, where do you feel like you've personally made a difference in volunteerism and giving? at Coastal? I would have to say Habitat. Coastal had funded one home when I got to Coastal 20 years ago. In fact, had funded one home up until, really up until the time I became CEO. But I saw an opportunity connected to our work in the mortgage space and the housing space to really do some pretty important work. That morphed over the last 10 years to a relationship that has built 60 homes, over 60 homes, and put uh, 60 families in affordable housing uh, that they might otherwise not have been able to get. And so that's, that's impactful. Sure, and you. I've worked on those sites. Yeah. I've worn a hard hat and I've put, you know, trusses up on the top of houses and raised walls. And that's, uh, that's uh, incredibly rewarding to do it beside the families that ultimately are going to live in those homes. Well, Chuck, as, uh, as you know, your season as CEO is, is wrapping up after an incredible decade. What words of wisdom would you speak to the next CEO about volunteerism and giving back to the community? It matters and it is making a difference. You know, the money's important to making a difference in, uh, in the community. But it's really our personal time, that's our treasure. 
that we can invest in our communities. All right, it's time for our lightning round, Chuck. First question, what was the first nonprofit you volunteered at? United Way in Greensboro. What was the last thing you donated to a nonprofit? Uh, furniture to Habitat Restores. What's the next event that you plan on volunteering at? I hope it's the dedication of one of these houses. Ever had any regrets about an organization you donated to? Yeah, I, w I wouldn't say regrets, but you make a lot of these, I don't know, $50, $100 donations over time, and, and you realize it's, it's really not making a difference. Maybe in the grand scheme of things it does, but yeah, but other than that, nothing. Last question. If you were walking around and you found a million dollars, what nonprofit would you donate it to? I think, yeah, I'd probably split it between United Way and Habitat. Chuck, thanks so much for making a difference in our community. Thanks for the investment that you and the employees make and the members make at Coastal. And for everybody else, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.